Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yes, this is Alex, and this is The Ramble. We go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. I have a gargly voice this morning. And uh, Larry Bubbles Brown says he's tired. (laughs) And there's a reason for that. What is it? It's a goddamn time change. Oh, I hate that. I hate it. I, you know, I sound like an old man, but I hate it. Apparently, uh, most of the, uh, the, the what, like sixty uh, percent of the American public hates it as well. But I looked it up. Uh, you know, uh, they almost ended it a couple years ago. The Senate passed a bill that said let's uh, not change the clocks anymore. Yeah. And then it got stalled in the House for what reason I don't know. So we, this would have been the last time. Uh, we wouldn't have changed the clocks this year if we'd gone through with a Senate bill. Well, you know, you don't need to change the clocks. It's insane. I mean, it, what it does, uh, it fools you. It's, it's just fooling yourself into thinking that it's another time that it really isn't. I mean, I don't care how much you want to say daylight saving time all the time, which is, I believe, what they're proposing. Uh, make it per they were they were going to make it permanent and they like saving time but that isn't mm-hmm. the time that isn't no. the sidereal clock okay i'm an old man i'm grouchy grow- okay but to me it just either pick one or the other but just stop changing them every twice a year god well first of all there's the changing of the clocks, which becomes easier and easier every year because, like, my watch automatically changes itself and my uh, phone automatically changes itself. A lot of the things that I have in the house automatically change. And then there's always that one or two that don't change, that you have to change. And you go and you do everything. I, I do it, oh, I don't know, earlier that evening so I don't have to do it the next morning. So I move all these various clocks, what in this case, back, all right? And then I wake up in the morning, and suddenly there is one or two clocks I forgot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, don't, just leave me alone. I don't want it. Just let, I, I don't care what the time is. I just know that it's on my watch, and I go by that, you know? But then right. you do this, and it's thrown my sleeping off completely. I got I went to bed at midnight, which I never do, and I woke up this morning at eight o'clock in the morning, which I never do. Yeah, it really feels fucked up. So I mean, I, I'm I'm still screwed. It's like, and this is this is uh, Tuesday when we're doing this, mm-hmm. so it's been going for a couple of days. It takes you a good week to get over the change. Oh takes me over a month so yeah you know there's certain states that don't have it i think arizona, arizona mm-hmm. hawaii and yeah half half of indiana half of india <laughs> oh jeez is that screwed mm-hmm. half of indiana why half of indiana I can't, probably the farmers i don't know the farmers well they say they it, they do this for the farmers but I don't think the farmers ever really cared. You no, know? there's only so much daylight you have in a day. So. And I got news for you. The cows aren't on daylight saving time. Nope. You know, they say moo, and that's it. That's about it. They're not very smart, you know. They just know that at this time I'm supposed to walk back to the barn with the other cows, very social, and and that's where we get our food. And then we go back out and we play some more. Yeah, that's it. They don't care what time it is. Right. So, so we came so close to ending this. I'm so pissed off. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's why I'm tired. Well, at least I have an excuse today. Oh, yeah, because uh, what uh, 
Because now when it's midnight, it's actually one in the morning on your body clock. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what's happening in the life of Larry Bubbles Brown? You, you, every time I call you and talk to you and ask you about stuff, you say, well, I've been working. Yeah, more than I uh, want to, but uh, you know, I just uh, I was in where was I? Boise. I've never been to Idaho. So I did a quick gig there, and just uh, you know what they say? Who said that? Uh, you don't get in entertainment. You don't get you don't get paid to uh, perform. You actually get paid to travel because the travel is such a pain in the ass. Yeah, well, I mean, I I was talking. I had a friend here, my old producer Albert Reynoso. And uh, he, you know, he had to take a plane from Florida. And then he took a plane today back to Florida. And he said, you know, traveling by plane would be great if somehow you closed your eyes and they transported you to the airport and put you in the plane. But the fact yeah, that Yeah, that's exactly the way I feel. It's getting to the airport. It's going through security and uh, and making waiting, you know, half an hour for these idiots to get on the plane and sit down. You know, I mean, and also, I mean, this whole thing about taking your shoes off. Why? What is that? Oh, that's, What's, yeah, so lame. Well, because one guy had a shoe bomb. Millions upon millions of people, maybe a billion so far, have had to take their shoes off at TSA. Why? Why? You know, I often felt, and I, I argued this for the longest time, the airline should have a flight that's called I'll Take My Chances flight yeah <laughs> that's a good idea yeah you know, and what happens is you you just don't you don't have to go through uh having your shoes checked you don't have to have your bags checked you can bring on as much water as you want to you can bring on a gallon of it if you want to you don't care because you're giving up your right to safety i would do that in a second wouldn't you Oh, yeah, people will give up everything for uh, alleged safety. So, God forbid we get rid of this fucking Patriot Act. And well, you know, let's go back to, uh, I don't know, let's go back to the 70s, okay? How do you get on a plane? You take the car to the airport, grab your baggage. You, uh, If you want to have the plane carry it in the, in the bottom, you just went up there and handed it to the person, and they gave you a little tag. And then you ran to the airplane, and uh, nobody stopped you. you know, it was just, and then you ran onto the plane. That was it. Hello. Up until uh, 9-11, yeah, you could, uh, you didn't even have to give your name. You could use a fake name on a ticket. It didn't matter. It, it really didn't, did it? Huh? No. Boy, those were, the, those were the days. They were unsafe. But, geez, you know, we're just too overly safe. Too overly safe. In 1969, there were 40-some commercial hijackings in the United States. Nobody got hurt. Really? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so the hijackers, what were they, considerate hijackers? They would come up with, they'd pull a gun in the plane and say, take us to Cuba. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had over 40 in one year. Well, Nobody I, got hurt. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, you know, if the airlines had flights going to Cuba, then they wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> but they didn't because we weren't talking to Cuba. It, that was the other stupid. We, we do a lot of stupid stuff. Well, this country so retarded. You know? I mean, that was stupid, the whole thing with Cuba. Why? Why? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't be uh, 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 capitalists? Oh, well, screw you. You know, they're, they're our uh, neighbor to the south. They're on an island that's, 50, what, 75 miles? 90. 90 miles south of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Miami. Uh, I mean, come on, and you're not going to recognize them? Oh, let's hide our eyes. They're not there. It's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And, you know, it, we, we went to a point where you could go to Cuba and you could buy stuff in Cuba and everything, and we had a relationship going with Cuba, and then Trump became president, you no longer could go to Cuba. What was that all about? You know? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's not like you can just get on a plane and go to Cuba. Now. Again, you're probably gonna have to hijack the plane. And, and, yeah. that, and that's, a, that's another thing. I mean, if you've gotta spend money on a gun 
to be able to go to Cuba. That's unreasonable. Okay? So. <laughs> Just leave me alone. And then the people that hijacked the planes to Cuba would, uh, they thought they'd be greeted with a hero's welcome, and I guess Castro put them in prison forever. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we don't want you. Yeah. What, maybe, what make you think we want you? Well, no, I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And now the, uh, now the uh, if you heard this, the DEA is going through airports, and they'll walk up to you and say, can I look at your bag? And they go, oh, no, I've been through TSA. Uh, well, we'd like to look through your bag. No. And the guy will say, well, if you don't let us look through your bag, we're going to get it. We're going to detain you and get a warrant. And then if there's, then what they do, they, if, there's, if you're carrying cash, they just take it. What? This, this, oh, yeah, this has been going on all over. I just found Wait out minute, last they week. Take your, just, if you're carrying cash, yeah. they take it? They take it, and uh, we assume it's drug money, and you'll have to sue us to get it back. Oh, jeez almighty. It's been happening there. Yeah, we live in a police state. It's just, uh... Well, I mean, that's terrible. That's yeah. terrible. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you how terrible that is. Well, I've just told you how terrible it is. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, jeez. That's amazing. So I think, mm -hmm. yeah, they say, yeah, if you don't let us look in the bag because, uh, you know, that's a, a cer you need a search warrant. So, uh, well, we're going to hold you here and you're going to miss your flight. So. Yeah, yeah. While we get the warrant. So. so I guess you let them look through your bag, right? That's what I saw most people do. There's a lot of, they're getting a lot of people in Atlanta because they're flying back and forth to L.A. because there's a lot of stuff shot in Atlanta now, so... They're grabbing. They grabbed some director. He was so pissed off, but he had to get back, so he he let him look. He didn't have any cash in there. But the worst thing that ever happened to me at an airport was in uh, Norway. We went to the Olympics uh, in '94. Lillehammer, yeah, '94. And um, Lori was with me, yeah. And we land, and we're standing there waiting for our baggage. And, you know, you sit there and it goes around and around and around. The stuff comes down. You keep looking for your baggage. You keep looking for your baggage. The amount of people in the uh, uh, pickup place uh, are thinning out now because they've all gotten their bags. And eventually we were the only ones sitting there with an empty carousel going around. And finally our bags come down. And a guy from the Norwegian whatever says, come with us. And they took me oh. to they took me to a room and gave me a, it, it literally made me take my clothes off. Really? And gave me a rectal. You no know. way, really? Yes. And I mean, this was terrorizing me. Jesus, I mean, I never heard this story. I yeah, I I was never felt so horrible in my life. You know, and I arrive now in this country I'm supposed to love. How can you love it when they just stuck their finger up your ass? Jesus. You know, so, I mean, we went to the ho back to the hotel, and I was just complaining like crazy. And the Coke people who were sponsoring our trip said, what are you griping about? I said, they just gave me an anal at the airport. You know? I'm sorry. I don't like things going in where they should be coming out. You know, so... So that was that, you know. That was that was the worst thing I ever had in an airport. I was treated like I was a drug dealer. Drug dealer, or I I don't know what they thought I was, you know. But I mean, I guess because my bag was the last one to come out. I don't know. Hey, you're the last one to have his bag coming out. You get a bonus. So they uh, they weren't friendly people apparently. <laughs> well, not there, you know, but. It, so I, I was for a couple of, for a day or so, I was almost inconsolable. I think I would have gotten the next plane back. I was getting. They were threatening to send me back. Oh well, then. Wow. That, oh, then there was the other thing that happened. It, it, this was just a weird trip, okay? And I loved. I, I was mentioning this story to Ronnie at Ronnie to Lori a couple of weeks ago. 
we got there and um, I was just I was just on edge because of this okay so uh, they put Lori in a room with a roommate this weird woman I can't remember some other announcer from another radio station who was doing her show from the Olympics because Coca-Cola sponsored this whole thing you know they bought the tickets they put us up in rooms they bought tons of rooms in Lillehammer ahead of the uh, Olympics in order to do this okay so we had nice rooms and blah 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 so anyway she, her roommate started going off on me or doing something and she didn't even know me <laughs> you know and uh so I went, I, let, I left, and Lori kind of left to see me out the door, and we were standing out in the hallway, and I started yelling at Lori. I said, you could have at least stood up for me, you know? I said, it, it, that woman was becoming offensive. And she says, yeah, she sort of was. And then I, 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 for some reason, I yelled, and I hit my hand like that, okay? So that's that. Lori and I calmed down. We quit arguing. You know, I was. I. It's just that I was a mess at this point. So I go in the next morning, and the Coca-Cola people stop me. They say, "Would you come downstairs with us, please?" And they take me downstairs to this room. It's an isolation <laughs> room. Again. <laughs> okay. Yes. Again. And I went through that whole thing at the airport, right? And they said to me, uh, we're thinking about sending you back home. I said, for what wow. reason? And they said, because we heard you hit Lori. Man. I said, what? I said, I would never hit Lori. I would never hit any woman. I would never hit any man. I'm just not violent. And they said, well, that's not what we heard. Her, her roommate said that you blah, 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 and she could hear you hitting her. What I was doing was this with my hand. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm just, you know, I'm shaking. And they said, don't leave this room. It's like they're the, if you can imagine it, Coca-Cola cops. All right? Uh, and and they, uh, uh, they kept me down in this room for maybe an hour. They said, well, we'll ask Lori what happened. And then they come back down, and they say, well, we just talked to Lori, and she said there's no way you would ever hit her. And we absolutely apologize. And they sent the other woman home. Well, that was good. But in the meantime, they were just so nice to me because they knew they had a suit on their hands if I wanted to do it. You should have sued them. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, this was just uncalled for. I said... To begin with, you should have waited for Lori to come in and asked her if it happened. Then, if you didn't like what happened, pull me aside and take me downstairs to your little room of torture or whatever that is, um, and and uh, in, investigate the situation. But until you know, you shouldn't do anything, right? Yeah. So that was Very my police state, like oh yeah, just the, yeah. well. That sounds like a whole trip was not worth it. <laughs> It, I have to say that well, once we got into the spirit of things and everything, it got better. All right? Uh, but uh, not that much better. I went to the, uh, 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 what do they call The skating pairs competition. Right? Couples. And there was this guy and his partner, and they were going around, and she went to do some kind of leap, fell and hit her chin on the ice and slid. That'll knock you out. You no, know, and slid for a little while. And you could see yeah. on the ice, there was this mark of blood, Ugh. this strip of blood on the ice, okay? Weird. And he picked her up. She was pretty much unconscious and took her off to the side. And they then took her away. It was very, it, it was kind of, there was something nice about the way he, he, he reacted to it. But there was something horrible about what had just happened, you know. And um, uh, then the best part was, so there's, uh, there's blood on the ice. So what do you do? How do you get the blood on the ice going, uh, way, whatever? 
They decide to bring out the Zamboni. <laughs> and they're taking the Zamboni and going over and over and over again over the blood. And now all you've got, really, is this mark of blood encased in deeper ice. Okay. Oh, wow. It was terrible. Just terrible. So it was a bizarre kind of trip. You know. I was hoping the judges would have held up zero on their scorecards. Yeah, exactly. So that was that was the uh, that was my life. You know, I love it. Uh, that must have been a twelve-hour flight to hell. Well, listen, to this this just came across on my watch. American babies are born with syphilis in sharply increasing numbers. The CDC said they called the situation dire. What, syphilis is back? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, I, I didn't know the I didn't know the mothers pass it on to the babies. Yeah, well hit that here, oh, of course they could, because syphilis is in the blood. And you the baby's sharing blood with the mother. So they get Yuck. born they get born with syphilis. Yeah. Uh, this, all, <laughs> this, this world is in such decline. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it, we we've passed the civil we've uh, it didn't pass the civilization test, you know. It's just gotten terrible, and and everybody acts terribly towards each other, and uh, babies have syphilis. Great, wonderful. I love nothing. Uh, I want to adopt a syphilitic baby. That's what I want to do. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I heard today, who was it? Oh, yeah, my friend Albert. You know, I, I every now and then Marjorie wants to get a cat. And I say, well, if we get a cat and then we want to go on vacation, who's going to take care of it? You know, well, you don't have any friends close by to here who would go and feed the cat and so on. And we're going to go for two, three, four weeks at a time. And do you really want to leave a cat alone that long? That's not fair either. Uh, and uh, so she says, well, and, and let's get a rescue. I, I go, yeah, okay, we, we can get a rescue, but I, I, I just don't want one. I also don't want a cat because a cat is going to live longer than me, okay? Chances are very much if I get a cat right now, I'm going to have to live to 100 to see that cat die, all right? Mm, yeah, wow. So the cat's going to look at me every day like, okay, you gone yet? You know. <laughs> So I, I, I haven't been up for that, but I found out that uh, Albert and his wife adopted, are you ready for this, a 12-year-old cat. Now, I thought that was a good idea because I could live with that. Yeah, I know some uh, girl that just did that. She got an 18-year-old cat because the cat's owner had died, and she, this poor cat was in a shelter, and she felt so bad for it she got it. So I think I might do that. You know. Yeah, get an older one. Yeah, get an older one. But still, it's a question of who's going to feed the goddamn thing when I'm on vacation. That yeah. is, you can't, yeah, you can't go anywhere unless you got someone who's going to... And then the, the cats get upset because you're gone. And, yeah. I mean, I used to have friends that would... I would actually allow them to stay at my place, you know. And then they all they, oh, the only thing they had to do to stay at my place was feed the cat. Uh, it's, you know, but uh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. So. It really is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder if everybody in every generation has said that, though. I think they do, but there are times when it is definitely worse than <laughs> It's pretty horrible now. It's pretty hor it's horrible what man does to, or human does to human. Uh, it, it's, it's disgusting. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you got a horrible thing that Hamas did. It was absolutely inhumane. And then on top of that, you got Israel turning around and doing the same thing, only 10 times worse. You know, 1,200, 1,400 Israelis died. There are now 10,000 dead Palestinians in Gaza. Of oh, which, that high? Wow. of which only twelve of them are members of Hamas. <laughs> really, thirty-five hundred babies. Okay, I mean, it's all disproportionate. You know, you just you got. Yeah, they come and get you. Have every reason to be 
mad and nasty and mean and everything like that. But your response should be proportionate and reasonable, you know, because you're not the other guys. But anyway, hey, it looks like we're starting to run out of time here. Yeah, it's been enjoyable. You stayed I'm awake. Out of time and light because of this goddamn clock change. Yeah, but y- y- you're right. I didn't want. I wondered why I was so tired and I was getting up early and all no, of that. That's absolutely it. That's uh, why there's uh, there's many more accidents the first few weeks after the time change. Yeah, and people adapt to the clock, you know, and have mm-hmm. them then unadapt to it. Can't be healthy. Cannot be healthy. No. Well. Anyway, I'll see you next week, uh, Larry. Next always week. always you got good it. to talk to the bubs. Okay. Thank you, Bubbles. Bye-bye. Thank you. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, thanks, Bubs. Thanks uh, for joining us this evening and uh, doing good by us. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. I gotta uh, 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 just uh, see who these people are. Oh, we got a lot of them here tonight. Oh, okay, a lot of them to start out with. Well, why not just bring them all in, and I'll go to sleep and let them talk. Okay, let me see here. Where are we? Um, admit all, uh, and all these people look to be legit, so I'm not worried about it. Hello uh, to uh, Kevin, and hello to Alan, and hello to Charlie, and hello to Josh. Hello to all of you. How are you? Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, see you later. Uh, hello, Jeff. How are you? Jeff's looking for the place to turn on his audio. Don't you see where it is, sir? It's right at the very... Well, he can't even hear me, probably. It's down at the bottom where it says... Uh, uh, it says it's connected. Put two toes in the air if you can hear. Yeah, so I'm not worried oh, about Oh, God, here we go. And hello to Alan, and hello to Charlie, and hello to Josh. Hello to all of you. How are you? Hey, man, I got I got to mute this. Wait a minute. Is he... okay. Well, see you later. Uh, hello, Jeff. Hello. How are you? No, no, Jeff. That's that's the recording you're listening to. He can't even hear me. You should hear that. Down at the bottom, where it says, uh, "No, yeah. we can uh, hear you, Jeff." Wait a minute, oh, we can hear you, Jeff, but we can also hear, hear the playback too. of the show. Hello to hello to Charlie. Don't talk to him; he'll catch up. Hello, you know, here, here, you. here comes Pamela to save the day. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. See you later. Uh, hello, Jeff. Hello. How are you? No, hello. no, Jeff. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the recording you're listening to. I know. I'm trying to develop something. <laughs> you should hear that. Down at the bottom, it says... Uh, uh, just uh, get, get rid of us, will you? I hear you, Jeff, but we can also <laughs> hear the playback of the Kill show. the browser. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Every night. Every when night. in doubt, Every, abort. Every now and I and I I put it on mute, but then if I mute it, we won't be able to tell if he's fixed it. Yeah. So you know, it's, you know, it's weird. Hello, everybody. How are you? All right. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh, what are you What are you reading? I'm typing a message to somebody. Actually. It, it, okay. That's all. Just uh, something I needed to tell somebody. Oh. Uh, okay. And I'm back. All right. You're fine. <laughs> you know. How you doing, Kevin? What are you up? You're not going up to Oregon again this weekend, are you? No, no, nope, not for a while, huh? Not until uh, December, and I pick her up for Christmas break. Okay, and then she comes down oh. here. Now she doesn't have a car. No, she doesn't have a car. Oh, there, really? No. Oh, okay. She All doesn't right. need it. No. What do you mean she doesn't need it? Why? Because the transit system up there is great. Oh, good. They can cruise around, and she doesn't really leave campus too much, except to go to the stadium to practice and games. And yeah, they transport her over there, and they've got you know duck rides and everything else over there, and you can get Uber and all that other good stuff. Yeah. So, what if she have to can go? You hear us, jump Jeff? on a bus? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Can you hear yes. us, Jeff? Yeah, I can. Okay, you're fine now. Just, uh, just remember you. to kill your browser. Before you come on. 
Just kill the browser. The, the Sometimes it doesn't want to. <laughs> no, you just kill the browser. Just yeah. stop it. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Turn it okay. off. Okay. You know, and then just come wait for us to get, bring you on to the Zoom, and that will work. Okay. You know. Oh, we got to turn on the panel on YouTube. What? Oh, yeah, I got to turn on the panel. Thank you. I'm yeah. even screwing up. Okay. Not been my day. You know, I slept till a quarter of noon today. Noon. Nice. Yeah. That's me every day. That's you every yeah, day? Yeah, really. Yeah, but how many hours is total, though? Hmm. I'm up to This was nine hours for me sleeping today, and mm -hmm. I went, what's that all about? You know? Am I practicing for death? You know? So, anyway. <laughs> Uh, uh, and and hello to, uh, to Josh and hello to uh, Alan. Hello, Alan. Welcome. Hi. How you doing? I'm sorry I missed the show last night. Speaking of sleep, I overslept. Oh, that's okay. Uh, you, you're welcome to do that. Took a nap and overslept. You're welcome to do that. And then you went to tune in to join uh, Jack's show, and he wasn't on. He wasn't on. He uh, he was having problems with his computer again. So. Yep. Uh, the only thing was that got me mad at him was he didn't call me to tell me, hey, I'm not going to be on tonight. <laughs> you know, so I'm sitting here wondering what the hell's going on, you know. Don't feel bad. He didn't call any of us either. I had nope. to call him. That put him at the verbal warning level or is this a written <laughs> warning? This is a, this is just a, 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 a shout out that he should call me. Just a yeah. verbal. So. And let me Public know. Public thrashing. Escalates to a written yeah, escalate. You probably to... get like a last chance final written warning, and after that, we normally then we'll put it on your permanent record, which will follow you through the rest of your life. Yes. Did you ever get one of those in school? A lot of time. Yeah. Did it ever follow you for the rest of your life? Nope. In fact, if you went looking for it now, could you find it? Well, you know. But I, I always used to love that episode of Seinfeld, though, where, where she goes to her doctor and the doctor writes something down and it looks like it's something nasty he's writing, but she doesn't know what it is. <laughs> and everywhere she goes, another doctor looks at it and goes, hmm, okay. Um, <laughs> you know. and, and you keep wondering what these doctors are writing to each other. You know, so. Anyway. Um, no, and so I've been tired all day. I mean, I've just been, you know, how you, you oversleep and then you're tired all day. I'm bumping it up. Yeah, me all. too. I'm not on, on standard time yet. My body's still you, you on You know, like that is time. part of it. That is really part of it. It's like I was talking with uh, Bubbles. I mean, uh, daylight saving time, saving time sucks. Yep. You know, just don't, just, just leave it alone. Now, what are they going to go? Are they planning on going to daylight saving time all the time? It's all right with they, me. No, we'll, we'll they wait. talk about it for two months and then it I'm all goes Well, wait away. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But, Charlie, you're a science guy. Do, yeah. you, do you really want them screwing around with the sidereal cycle? It doesn't matter whether we're six hours from Greenwich time or five hours from Greenwich time. I don't care. Yeah. I know you don't care, but there's a certain sanctity in <laughs> us going by the solar clock, okay? Well, yeah, I mean, traditionally. I mean, noon is supposed to be when the uh, sun is on the prime meridian. Mm-hmm. Well, when it's off, cares? when it's off the prime meridian all year long because they just decided they were going to do daylight saving time all year long. And then what are they going to call it when it's all year long? Time. It's time. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, you know, the, uh, there are some countries where they do weird stuff like China. There's only one time zone. Yeah. Even so though it crosses of, yeah. six, what, six timelines, something like that? <laughs> yeah. And there's only one time zone. Yeah, sun rises at 3 a.m. now in some parts of the country. Yeah. And isn't it Arizona where they don't go to daylight saving time? Yeah, Arizona yeah. did. That was wonderful. I loved it. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I lived there for two summers. Yeah, and why, why? Did they ever give a reason why they did that? Yeah, because it was so hot. You couldn't do anything. It could up 120 degrees. 
Oh, if okay. If it's dark at eight o'clock, then it cools down by nine o'clock. You can go out and do stuff. Oh, okay. Down to one hundred nine <laughs> degrees. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That was easy. That, how did everybody. you? How did you live with that heat all the time? I mean, I, I'm asking a person who lives in Texas where it isn't much better. Well, it was more humid in Texas. It was. And it's serious. It makes a difference. It was. A I know it was a dry was heat. I mean, it's a dry it did not bother me. 120 degrees didn't bother me as much as 105 in Austin. Oh because well, the humidity. It, it, the humidity in Texas was the thing that drove me crazy. Now I lived there for two years. You live in Houston, though. That's why Houston's very humid. Yeah, yeah lived there two years, and never was able to keep a crease in my pants. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder why. I kept peeing in them. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so you know, it, 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 uh, but I, I just don't understand it. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I, I, it's, I think we're fooling ourselves when we do daylight saving time. You know. We, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, mm -hmm. and then tonight I was talking to Marjorie about some of the stuff you were saying last night about us being two percent Neanderthal. Yes. Although, as I said last night also, that Trump seems to disprove that theory. It's probably more like 80%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why did they, they had the, they had the prefrontal lobe, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't know why I'm asking you. I don't know if you know the answers to these questions. Yeah, well, I, mean, I no, just figured. Our brain is considerably I, bigger than Neanderthal's brain, yeah. So they were missing parts of the brain that we have. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So the smaller the brain, the less the ability to... Is that in proportion to the body of the animal that has it? I guess. I don't know. Because whales have incredibly large brains, don't they? Yes, they do. But that's in proportion to their body. So you have to ask if that in proportion to their body... Well, what am I saying here? We're, yeah. talk, we're talking about the size of brains. Like, let's take Alan here. Very, very tiny, peanut-sized brain. Okay? Yep. Uh, but a really big, huge member, so, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, us Jews, we're, uh, you Well, know, so, so, so that's what you think with, then, is what you're saying. Absolutely. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. <laughs> So I wonder if we're going to get a lot of people tonight. I never know at this time how many people we're going to wind up getting calling. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, in many ways, I don't care. So You know, I think what we ought to do is is one night when Jack's computer is working, none of us call in or say anything so he can see what it feels like. What? To, to not have anybody show up when he's, when he's up and running. I'm joking. But, you know, it just... He doesn't bother to call. He doesn't. He, I asked him to put it on Facebook if he wasn't going to be up, you know. And 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 he said, "Okay, he'd do that." And nothing. Well, no I, one. you know, I the only thing that bothers me is you people who are, are loyal uh, Jack callers, right. okay, or as we like to call you here, the Jack offs. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> you were going to say. <laughs> you were thinking it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, um, you regular, you know, Jack callers, uh, all of a sudden the show isn't there. And, yep. and he, you know, to me, the reason I always put something up on Facebook, if I'm not going to be doing a show or I do a show when I don't feel like doing a show or I had trouble with equipment, once I got it fixed, I go back on is free because of you, you know, you're, pl you know, the, you go out of your way to plan for this and and you deserve a little a little respect in that matter uh not just oh the equipment isn't working i'm not going to go on tonight you know so I you know when you're not on you always post it in facebook oh yeah yeah i and, mean and he's got a facebook account so yeah all, all you have to do is just post hey no show tonight or yeah. you know a, an announcement we're down my computer isn't working see I, you tomorrow you know. And he can do it from his phone. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, we spend 20, 25 minutes trying to log on and yep. it never shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, well, what the hell? You know, I mean, I hope he gets on tonight okay. You know. Fortunately, Alan has half the people's phone number that's on the on Jack's show. 
And so when I can't get on and Charlie can't get on and Wayne can't get on and Amy can't get on and Brian can't get on, we all know it. Yeah. We know that he's not got one person that, that came on and he doesn't want to, re you know, he can't bring the other people in. He's used that. Yeah. He told us that several times. And, you know, he doesn't want to restart the show. But yet when he's got four people on, he'll restart the show sometimes. <laughs> you know, and we all got to log off and log back on. Well, no, Brian, you, you, you know, well, what I would do if I were you is if you go there and he's not there. Yeah. And you don't hear him on. He might. He doesn't run a show here. Uh, then don't mm -hmm. call him. You know, don't waste your time. I guess you know. But I'd like him to be more reliable for you. Well, I like you that. Know, I, like I don't. I don't care about Gabnet. I. I want. I, and and listeners out there, I, I care about uh, about you guys. You know. So who did we lose. We lost Kevin. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I said who did we lose. Kevin disappeared. There no, he just he just clicked oh. this. <laughs> his video off so anyway Ben uh, let's see here what kind of week has it been in politics well let's see here we had Trump on on the the stand okay the uh, Republican the third Republican convention yeah you know what he you know what he published on truth social he did you hear about this uh, uh, Josh, yeah, I didn't watch it. he he published uh, a picture oh, of yeah. Judge Angaran, yeah, and, a, and a, a thing he had sent out to some kind of uh, newsletter that he belongs to, of him working out and topless, you know, with a, I guess a towel around him or something <laughs> like that, and he put that on there. Why? You know, yeah, he's an oh, older the man. Judge huh? working out. Come on, come on, Donald. Why don't you take your top off? Let's see how that uh, looks. Yeah. You know, that's going to scare women and children for crying out loud. You know, and Goran <laughs> actually looked okay. You know, I mean, he was, you know, he had a, the, the body of a man in his mid seventies, but he looked okay and he works out. Good for him. You know, I can't even get myself to go down to the mailbox. You know, so I don't know. Donald works out. He gets in front of the mirror in his bedroom, and what do they call that uh, Narcus. Something I don't know where you what where you turn what? on to yourself. Oh, oh, oh. Narcissism. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. works out. Yeah. Okay, but you know, I mean, all I'm saying is, uh, I I thought that was tasteless too. Yeah, but the guy, well, the guy, the guy's the guy, the guy has no taste at all. And, and you see him giving these speeches, and there's nothing in there about what he's going to do for the country. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm elected, nope. you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lower taxes, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. Nothing. Uh, well, it's all about me, 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 me. He says, I'm going on trial for you. What? Uh, no, you're going on trial for you to save your goddamn company. You know, I mean, I, I just I just don't understand any of it. I don't understand how we've gotten to this point in American politics where this seems to be OK behavior. And then did you see Nikki Haley and Ramaswamy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, on the, on the, uh, yeah. And, the and at, at one funny. point she got completely frustrated with him and said, you're scum. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Love, when has that ever been heard in any debate in you know, anywhere? You know yeah. what? And what Phil you, thinks Ramashami got won the debate. Phil, wow. yeah, he sent me a thing, sent me a link that says uh, this guy says that uh, Ramashami won the debate. Ramas Ma Ramashwami. Okay, whatever. Something like that. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Phil, uh, Phil, uh, Phil, uh, Phil thinks he won. Well, who cares who won? Because none of them are getting the nomination. So you know, I mean, at least at this point, the only I, way any of these people doing these debates is going to wind up working in their favor is if, in the end, end product, um, uh, uh, Trump doesn't get to run. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or that Trump's looking for a vice president. Well, that, they, they, he's not going to pick any of those people. No, none of these people. I think he's going to pick Marjorie Taylor Greene. 
<laughs> that would make sense. They both think alike. I know no, you're I laughing, think. Kevin, but it, 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 I think Carrie it's a, Lake. Carrie you Lake. Want somebody that looks good. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Somebody who's dressed he can look up when he's passed out on the That's ground. That's what he says. He's, yeah. he's got to yeah. look good. Yeah. Marjorie Taylor Green's not that bad looking. I take a hard. Pass Marjorie on. Taylor Green's not that bad looking. Oh, I don't like a so. horse. <laughs> I got yeah, I mean, you ask her. You now. ask her how yeah. old she is, and she taps her foot. <laughs> <laughs> they could. Oh, use the eye of the beholder. Service, you know. Hmm. What? I mean, they'd be able to only have one tanning bed between them that way. I mean, they'd, they'd <laughs> consolidate. <laughs> and that true. would save a little bit of one. electricity. That's true. One Boy, tan- Ohio sure came through for the Democrats. What? Ohio. Ohio really came through for the Democrats. This no, they came through for themselves. You know? They did right by themselves. Uh, you know, they, they legalized marijuana and... and Legalized abortion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slapping the face to the Democrat, to the Republican. So now you can get high, not know what you're doing, get pregnant, and take care of it. You know, it's a whole package deal. Yeah. Uh, but Three for one. Yeah. Also, uh, where was it? Virginia? That uh, they voted in uh, in abortion. That was Kentucky. Kentucky, excuse me. Yeah. And uh, uh, the governor there, who thought he was Democrat it, we, what is, is he a, the Democrat got elected yeah yeah in Kentucky yeah, in Kentucky yeah. so I mean you know it, it was a good night for the de- Democrats but I wouldn't just relax you yeah. know no it's mansions uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think they are. well that the problem is mansion not running again yeah and then that leaves that Senate seat open and it could go either way yeah. Um, yeah. well I don't Maybe know. we'll get a oh, decent we're... Democrat yeah, well, that's yeah, that's sure. that's fine. Yeah, you say that, happy. but they just might wind up in that part of the country voting for a Republican, and then you know the the Senate is like one seat difference. You know, so yeah. <sighs> it's all ridiculous. <clears throat> it makes I just hope Cruz goes down. I don't want Cruz in the Senate anymore. Is he running again? Yeah, he's yeah. up next year. He's running. He's up next year, not this year. No, no, uh, he's uh, he's 2024. He's up. Yeah, well, yeah. well, what he'll have he'll have going for him is that it's a presidential election, so the turnout will be high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it'll work against him, but uh, that's you know. Well, I wish people wouldn't vote by party. It would be fine, better if people just voted by the person and whether he did a job for you. You know. Well, there are some, you know. I mean been talked the last few days I heard about you know with everything in Ohio that you know we we do still have a longtime Democratic senator here in, in this state you know Sherrod Brown mm-hmm. yeah um, even in a state that the last couple presidential elections has gone to the Republican side but they're happy uh, with her right <laughs> uh, him yeah Sherrod him Brown, him I mean, him I mean they're yeah he's a, a union leader and uh, yeah you know some other things but he doesn't uh he doesn't really move too far into the culture type things and stuff like that um i mean i think he's very open to it but he doesn't really make it his platform mm-hmm. you know um he navigates it really well uh but he's very big on jobs and on and unions and and uh trade uh, he's got some background in that, you know, I mean, he's obviously, uh, he had some of the same views on trade in, in China and things like that as Trump did. So, you know, he, you know, they couldn't hit him on that. And, um, same thing with his, uh, immigration deal, you know, he's, he's about like me. He's fair enough. You know I mean? That's what I'm saying. He's, he's fair enough. You know, I mean, he doesn't, uh, get on the latest, you know, Democratic, you know, whatever's bothering them that week and make it sound like the world's going to end over. You know, he doesn't chase the political ambulances like a Chuck Schumer or somebody like that, you know? I mean, because he's in a state where that's not going to really work. So he just does his job and focuses on that. So it's worked out well for him. I mean, very much like the governor in Kentucky, Andrew Bashir. 
uh, you know, the situation's not all that different, but, you know, the real blow to them in Ohio on the abortion amendment was uh, the fact that they thought they were going to really beat that away and, and do away with it by the fact that they said, you know, they tried to sneak it onto the ballot and then they tried to change the law that said it, you know, it, it was no longer 50 plus one to pass it. It had to be 60%. Yeah. And they tried to sneak an amendment onto the May ballot that would change our constitution so that when you wanted to pass an amendment, no longer was it 50% plus one, it was 60%. Mm -hmm. And they thought there wouldn't be any turnout for that. Um, and I mean, that was the only thing on the ballot in May was that other than if you had a local city council mayor, yeah. so, you know, something like that. But there was nothing else statewide and the turnout was very high and it got defeated overwhelmingly because everyone knew what they were trying to do. And then a few months later, everyone came back and voted for it. And it was damn near 60 percent, to be honest, if I remember right. I mean, you know, so it was very high and. My understanding was that uh, it was pretty high among even like Republican men, for example. I think 55 to 60 percent range of them voted for it, uh, you know, and things like that. And the marijuana amendment was, mm -hmm. I mean, they both won handily. I mean, they yeah. called both of them at, you know, the polls here close, I think, at nine. I mean, it was mm -hmm. 1030 and it was done. You know, I mean, I mean that's how long it, that's about as fast as you can count the votes. Right. Right. You know, and most of Ohio uses electronic voting. Um, it has a paper ticket attached to it. You put this ticket in the machine, mm -hmm. and you know there is a paper trail, but it is electronic. So I believe the precincts can report in really quickly. So they get votes in Ohio counted fast, and it was. I mean, it was obvious that it was going to pass. I mean, you could tell as soon as. Well, the I think I think the Republicans um, had it all wrong. Right. You know. Uh, to begin with, they didn't realize that people were used to having a law in their favor for 50 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. That counts for something, okay? And then all of a sudden, something that was a, was a right, okay, was pulled away from them. Yeah. Uh, people don't like having their rights pulled away from them. And whether you're for abortion or not, I, I like to say I'm not pro-abortion. If I had somebody who got pregnant and... I would urge her to have the child. You know, I, I wouldn't want her to, you know, right. kill, uh, you know, do away with my potential child. But that's me. I don't have a right to tell anybody else what to do, and that's why I'm for free choice, you know? And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was just, you know, it's finally being settled probably the way that it should have been, you know, a long time ago. So they thought that this this you know supreme court deal was going to be the the thing that just fixed them for forever and they found out otherwise but i mean what was really interesting about the one in ohio was when the supreme court overturned roe v wade ohio immediately passed i think it was already passed and was set to trigger they had a heartbeat bill I mean, abortion in Ohio basically became nothing. I mean, they had yep, a couldn't do it. a heartbeat bill, uh, which was eliminating the ability at you know somewhere in the four to six week range. And, and I mean, so that's what I'm saying. This amendment that we passed overturns that state law that no people got to vote on. Their elected representatives did. Uh, okay, yeah, which is fair enough. But the people then got to put their check on the elected representatives and they said we're not accepting the bill that you passed their your five to six week ban that you know the the two houses of the legislature passed it and the governor signed it and ran his mouth and had a fucking little smirk on his face like he always does and the very first chance the, pe the people got two <laughs> chances and both times said no we're not doing that and it was pretty overwhelming i mean in this day and age anything that gets 57 58 percent of the vote that is a whopper nowadays yeah. right i mean almost any election we have is 51 49 yeah i mean yeah. you know when you start getting into 
you know, that range. I mean, that's a 30-point win in the NFL. I mean, if you ask me, we're close to it. So, I mean, they overturned a law using um, their Democratic ways that they're allowed to, and that's great. You know, and it, it, it basically said in 30 days that bill is, expires and this takes effect. So, you know, if you are a lawmaker, stick that up your ass. So you it, know, it, it, it now permanently it's in the in the Constitution yeah. of the in state the of Ohio. Right. Is there any way that can be reversed? Well, they can reverse it through the same process that they did to put it in. But I fat chance of that passing. Yeah, right. I mean, I I don't. I mean, that's now that's what it would take. It would take yeah. an amendment to, to overturn the amendment. And <clears throat> yep. the with the way that it passed, and I don't I don't really think that Ohio or anywhere is going to get less progressive on that issue as time goes by. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, I would assume things typically trend toward you know more progressive especially as the population yep. in this state changes and there are a lot of people moving here mm -hmm. uh you know there's it's becoming more diverse it's not you know as many the even the rural areas where i live you know which were dominated by you know white families are you know changing so i mean i i, I don't see how it could go away I mean, now what happens 50 years from now? Heck, you know, none of us know, right? But, I mean, the next election cycle, are they going to be able to put an amendment on there and get rid of it? I, I, I don't think they are. I mean... Why waste, your, why waste, why waste your time? Haven't right. you seen the results of the last one? Yeah. You I know? mean, like I said, they yeah. got beat twice. They, put, they tried to put an amendment in there that would have made it impossible for this one to pass by making it a supermajority to pass an amendment to our Constitution. That got beat. And then they immediately turned around three months later and had the two amendments up that that first election was meant to squash, basically. Mm -hmm. And they passed the marijuana, you know, legalization. And they passed, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, reproductive rights amendment or whatever it was called, you know. And, I mean, there was a lot of language in there now that basically said, you know, that you cannot have an abortion after... Uh, a, a medical doctor has determined that it is viable yep. for survival outside of the most. So, again, it's we didn't do anything right. You know, you know, the the very last day before you're about to pop it out, you can just say nope. You know, the hell with it. I mean, but wait a minute, I, I, is wasn't it, anything. I, I'm, I want to I, I want to pass a law for retroactive abortion. Yeah. In other <laughs> words, so then we wouldn't have to put up a, like a Trump. You know, just retroactive nice. abortion. Sorry, you're going, pal. But I yeah. mean. It wasn't some, you know, anything crazy or grotesque or anything like that. I mean, it was a... Basically, it was Roe v. Wade. Yes, it was a middle of the road, yeah. you know... Reasonable. Common sense, yeah. if you will, type of law mm -hmm. that had a lot of language in it that made sure if a doctor looked at you and said, if we don't get this baby out of you, one or both of you is going to die. It gave them all the protection they needed to basically yep. also be able to do anything they needed to do. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot. But of I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to. You, you don't have to have a medical doctor. To say, no, 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 no. You don't. But I'm saying, with all these laws that were changing, there was all this fear about doctors who were becoming scared to death to to say that. Right. 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 You right. know, and they. I'm just saying they when they wrote the the amendment. They kept those kinds of what if hypotheticals in mind, and they put a lot of language in there because I read yeah. it. Well, let's go to Texas. You know, that, let's that go to Texas that. where Charlie lives, and there, if you're a doctor and you do an abortion, you can be arrested, put in jail for how many years? Yeah. What, what's yes, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they they had a lot of stuff in there to basically make sure that it was plain as day, protecting medical doctors. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, at any point, you know. I mean, so, I, so. So it doesn't matter now. They can just run, uh, run the abortion clinics and not have to worry about any. Yeah, right. Uh, is, uh, those, is, what? What? What did you say, Charlie? The pregnant ten-year-olds don't have to go to Indiana to get abortions anymore. Yeah. 
Well, you know, Ohio is skirts is surrounded by several uh, uh, non-abortion states, right? Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. Some of them have passed some stuff. You know, uh, Kentucky also did something similar, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So we're bordered by Kentucky to the south. Indiana um, to the west. But I thought you could do things in Indiana. I don't think... Yeah. They, no, but they, they since that 10-year-old went to right, get our right. abortion in Indiana, they passed a um, six-week... I believe Michigan yeah. has got some pretty liberal laws on the books about that now. Hey, but you can I'm, come from another state and get an abortion in uh, Ohio, right? There's yeah, nothing you can, wrong Yeah, you can. I mean, as soon as this law's you know, yeah, like seven more back. days or whatever, but yeah. And then I don't know what the laws are in PA and Pennsylvania. I'm not really. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I just think, you know, f for years and recently in recent years, we've looked upon Ohio as being unreasonable. They're a swing state that they go Republican or they go this or they go that all of a sudden they did this. Why do you think they did this? Do you think the state is turning bluer? No, no, I mean, the legislature here had always been Republican mm -hmm. um, for a very long time. And there were many congressional districts in the rural areas yeah. that haven't had anything but a Republican since, you know, probably LBJ. Okay. Um, but it was open-minded when it came to statewide, statewide elections for... For Washington, for the presidency, and for uh, yeah. you know senators. Yeah. But its internal politics to the state had typically been dominated by Republicans, and what happened was Trump was so popular in the rural areas that it emboldened them to just do craziness. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they took on the radicalness that he came to embrace. And I mean, I don't think people realize it, but, you know, they think that this great, you know, Idaho or somewhere like that is where Trump is really popular. But like I said, I, I did a lot of looking around and I couldn't find anywhere. I mean, my county, I mean, I live 20 miles south of Columbus in a rural county in the cornfield, but we're not that far from, I mean, you can get in the car and in 30 minutes, you can be on the campus of Ohio State University in a parking lot watching a football game. I mean, we're we're close enough. In the county that I live in, the both times that Trump ran here or you know was on the ballot here, we were at like ninety two percent, and the other time it was like ninety three percent. I mean, he got ninety three percent of the votes cast in my county. I don't. Right. I didn't see anywhere else in the nation that he. I mean, it might have been the most Trump county in the nation. So, you know, but I I looked at the abortion vote the other night, and I believe it passed in my county just barely, or it failed, but just barely. I mean, it was. It wasn't a ninety ten split. It was fifty fifty, mm -hmm. and that's in the yeah. most Trump county. And some of the other counties that got trounced. So. I mean, I did look at some of that on the map. But. Well, my feeling is, you know, I don't care what you do. Um, it's not my business to tell you what to do. And in this I, case, it's my. It, I'm, I'm making. If I vote uh, against abortion, uh, then I'm making a decision for you, and I don't think I should do that. Yeah. You know, and I'm, yeah, but no. not everybody's as reasonable as I am. Um, no, I, I, I've never understood some of that. I mean, we've. I think I've mentioned it before. I mean, the whole process of abortion sort of wigs me out a little bit, you know. And I mean, I'm not personally fond of it, but no, you don't have to be. You know, it's like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying, right. I'm, I'm I mean, not for it. You know, right. I'm clearly not for it. But that's yeah. for me, right? You know, and no, and I'm, by the I'm, way, by the right. way, I also don't have the right to tell a woman what to do, and God knows I've tried. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't either, and I mean, I like I say, it kind of wigs me out, but I I just can't imagine inserting you know laws into the conversation that happens in a room with a doctor and a and a woman, and you know. And I mean, even though it kind of freaks me out or whatever, my wife is like, it doesn't freak me out. Nope, not going to be a problem at all. You know, so, you know that's her, for, you know, so 
it's like okay you yeah. know <laughs> but, but you know i mean i just that's, that's what i'm saying i mean it that that issue republicans just thought they had this stranglehold on and man i'm just telling you there are so many places i mean there are houses where you know like i said that i mean there's disagreement in the household right i mean one person well it's like, kind of like no, in, in, so, in, in a way says, it's yeah, kind of like um, uh, the whole argument about pot you know, for a while in most states, in order to get pot, you had to have uh, get get a medical uh, prescription from your doctor. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, "Do I really have to have cancer before I can smoke marijuana?" Yeah. You know, well, I, well, don't well, tell me what to do with my body and not to do with yeah, my exactly. body. Yeah, exactly. How does it hurt you? In fact, I, I smoke pot. People got really mad at me for a while. I mean, on the air in many states years yeah. ago when I got on and said, "Listen, I think we should make heroin legal. I think that by on, uh, by a doctor's prescription, a lot of the all of these drugs should be made available in one way or another, because that's the way we would kill the illicit trade in them. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, and, I mean, I agree people, that people you know. wouldn't die. You know. Yeah. I'm I'm certainly I'm not really against drugs period. So I mean, yeah, I mean I I certainly think that if Pfizer made heroin, they would make sure there wasn't fentanyl in it to kill you, right? Because that would exactly. equal a lawsuit for 50 exactly. billion dollars, the first person. So it would be you know, the safest heroin ever made. Yeah. You know. And I mean, if you don't want to go that far, I mean, I guess Reasonable people well, can have that conversation. Uh, oddly, but, oddly enough, I mean, heroin, marijuana, heroin is not an unsafe drug. Okay, uh, right. it, the thing that made it's it unsafe but, was the fact that it was done. Ill, it was created illicitly, and you never knew what else was in in the heroin. Yeah. Well, that's usually the problem yeah. with it, right? People died you know. from heroin because they got uh, too big a dose, or something. Is like, there wasn't a regulation of dose, dosage and so on, and yet we allowed people to die yeah. by not legalizing it. So I was, yeah. and also there were great myths about heroin that were per perpetuated by, you know, a lot of movies and so on and so forth, like Man with the yeah. Golden Arm. And the yeah. fact was that it, it, her heroin, uh, if uh, done reasonably and, uh, and, and legally created, was not particularly a dangerous drug. It is a highly addictive drug. Right. That's its problem. Uh, and it's highly addictive because what it does is uh, it, it creates uh, art, an artificial endorphin in your body. And your body needs endorphins. You know, when you get frightened, you get endorphin rush. When you're running, people, runners run for that endorphin rush. Mm -hmm. It's like a morphine rush. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you stop, if you start taking heroin, your endorphin production stops because yep. it, the body is saying, hey, I'm getting it, I don't need to make it. And if you stop to doing heroin, what you get then is withdrawal symptoms because you're not getting endorphins. And you don't get them back for about a year. That's what's wrong with heroin, okay? So I make my case. There are a lot worse drugs than that, fentanyl is worse than heroin. Unless, of course, it's heroin laced with fentanyl. Yeah. Fentanyl. Alan's got his hand up. Yes, uh, uh, Alan. So in the, 80, in the 70s, 80s, and then to the early 90s, most heroin came from, a lot of it came from Mexico, and it was packaged in cow patties, cow, cow feces. Yeah. So what a lot of people would do is they break off a chunk of it, put it on a spoon, and they put a cotton ball on it, add a little water to it, and they'd heat it up underneath, and the cotton ball was supposed to take the impurities out of it, right? Mm -hmm. And then put it in a hypodermic needle and put it in their vein. And a lot of these people came down with hepatitis, go figure. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, some of them or a lot of them died of that. And yeah, heroin is very addictive. But heroin wouldn't have killed anybody if it had been legal. You know, if if you could have gotten fentanyl, fentanyl, fentanyl's legal in, in in used in medicine all the time, but yet street levels of fentanyl, people don't know what they're doing. Well, I mean, yeah, but is yeah. a doc, is a doctor Same if, thing. If, if a doctor is going to prescribe fentanyl to you, they're going to know what dosages to give to you. 
They know what to prescribe to you, and you probably won't die from the fentanyl. That's but right. it, it, it's the street-level drug. that they're, they're lacing cocaine with fentanyl. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. how dare you ruin a, a drug like that with fentanyl? You know, but they do. So I mean, fentanyl can be before. deadly to somebody in two micrograms. Or think about think about an aspirin. Well, what, 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 where did I read that uh, there was some somebody got uh, some fentanyl in the mail or or, or yeah, it was a it was a, a, a voting ballots or something that yeah, was the uh, election that was just uh, election the, officers yeah, are yeah uh, fentanyl and I. Uh, was thinking, well, you know, just getting it in an envelope. But, you know, if you touch that stuff, it can go in through the skin into your system. And uh, it, it has been known to kill just by touching it. Yeah, yeah. If, it's, if it's made to be transdermal like a patch, then yeah. it can soak through your skin. Just touching it, that's kind of been debunked. Uh, Charlie, Charlie yeah, in the beginning they were... They were pushing that hard, but yeah, but but you you know if somebody's got it in their hand or in a pipe or something, and they blow some powder in your face. But you know what I hate? Deadly. I hate, or it goes I hate a politicians like right. who yep. politicians who don't know the first thing about science or about drugs or about anything, who are then saying, and of course all these drug cartels are bringing up fentanyl because yeah. that's the key word now. You know. Yeah. Um, well, there's still a lot of cocaine out there. Hmm. These drug cartels are still bringing in cocaine, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, well, fentanyl's a buzzword. But fentanyl's yeah. a buzzword, and right. and uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, so whatever. Well, what else is new? Yeah, yeah. what else is talking new? About. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I mean, it's not necessarily the medication. You know, it's it's the some of the ways that it's used by people yeah. from the illegal trade. I mean, you take. You know, heroin, for example, but down at the base level of heroin, you know, the same ingredients are used to make, you know, pills that people take, painkillers. I mean, if you take the pills that, you know, like someone like Kevin or myself take, a Percocets or whatever, mm -hmm. I mean, they come from a pharmacy, so they're not going to have any of that stuff in them. They're safe. I mean, the only way I'm going to kill myself taking those, it's not going to happen on accident. I'm literally going to have to sit here and say, I took four. Let's take another. Let's take another. Let's take another. Let's take another. I mean, you're gonna have to take fucking, you know, twelve or thirteen of them to kill yourself. I mean, you're gonna have to purposely, you know, do it. So, but it's the fake pills that are out there that you know kill people. We have we have two drugs in this country um, that probably every year killed more people than heroin ever did, or any of these drugs ever did. One was called cigarettes. Yeah. And the other one was called alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I mean, I had a friend just recently. I mean, I have to admit that Shecky died of alcohol. He had yeah. a cirrhosis of the liver. Right. You know, uh, people die of of those two, uh, I was going to say condiments, but those two <laughs> con uh, consumptions of any drugs around. And I, I, I've often said, I often felt that alcohol was worse than heroin. And it, it really is. I mean, alcoholism has always been a problem in this country. It's easy to oh, get, I mean, and it's yeah, self diagnosed it's self-dosed. Yep, that's right. Yeah. And in the old you days... Know, a lot of times the drugs, like Josh was talking about, like, like uh, you know, uh, oxycodone or, or, uh, or, or you know, uh, heroin, you know, some of the, the stronger... Narcotic pills, they're they're usually having they're usually in a Tylenol base, and if you don't take enough of the drug to put you to sleep and stop, that narcotics slow down your respiration. If you don't take if you have a tolerance to that, the the Tylenol, like if you had four, more than four thousand milligrams of Tylenol in a day, it can kill your liver. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be uh, uh, actually well, ty Tylenol. Yes, uh, 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 ibuprofen. It's kidneys. Kidney. That's right. Yeah. 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 But, but that's what I'm saying is, you know, in order to, you know, basically go to sleep and then suffocate yourself, yep. you're gonna have to take, you know, a bunch. If you take, if you already take five or six Percocets a day every day, you're gonna have to take fucking thirty of them. Oh, sure. well, it's yeah. terrible. What's terrible about both cigarettes and alcohol is they're gradual. 
you don't really feel anything's happening to you or that your health is being uh, uh, compromised by either of those drugs. Mm -hmm. But after you do them for years, you know, I mean, Shecky, I think, drank for 40 years, okay? Uh, quite heavily from what I, 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 I never knew it. You know, because I, he, yeah. he was he was one of those very... Some people are better at hiding Oh, it he I. was a very secretive drinker. Uh, and one time he finally admitted to me, he said, I wish that I got drunk. Because if I did, I'd stop drinking. But I don't mm -hmm. get drunk. I just keep yeah. drinking. Yeah. You know? And there's some people who don't get drunk, okay? You know. Um, a, lot, a lot of Asians... Uh, get drunk quicker than most other. Well, the, Amer the American Indian had a problem with alcohol that right. way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Two beers and they're drunk most of the time. Yeah, well, two beers and I'm drunk. So you know, I'm. I guess oh, I'm part okay. American Indian. I, right. I guess it's that Neanderthal in me. <laughs> yeah, <man>. yeah. <laughs> fucking savages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I, uh, I got to tell you, I, um, um, you know, I've never been a drinker, and and uh, I've always been very much against alcohol. I often said that the best thing that happened to this country was the uh, in, installing of prohibition uh, back in the twenties, and the worst thing that ever happened to this country was the installation of of, uh, of uh, prohibition. Um, before prohibition, there were at least three places you could buy alcohol on every street in New York City, mm -hmm. okay? Hus a a the average man, woman, a ma man, would drink enough to get them drunk every day and come home drunk. I mean, yeah. alcohol was yeah. unbelievable in this country. And uh, the consumption of it was just out of whack. Families were being ruined. I mean, it, it was alcohol that brought about uh, 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 women's rights uh, because the whole women's suffrage movement was called the Women's Temperance Union. And it was all based on trying to get out. And part of their uh, what they did was uh, the WCTU worked at getting alcohol made illegal um, because women didn't like the idea that they'd be home all day taking care of the kids and whatever and the husband would come home spend all his money at the bar didn't have any money left then he would also come home and be drunk beat his wife I mean it was a horrible thing in this country that was going on so you know you don't want to screw up a good uh, cocaine high when you were younger with alcohol did you no no so I mean I you know so I I, I saw uh, prohibition I think was good in that at least for a ten year period of so or so it um, it slowed the use of alcohol in this country yes it was illegal people were buying it bootleg and so on and so forth but it still was less than it was when it was legal okay and then after it was all over it never went back to the levels it once did. So maybe there was a good part about prohibition that we never talked about. You know, it was a stupid idea because you can't make something illegal everybody wants. You know, are we losing Charlie? Oh yeah. Okay. Going to sleep. Oh god. I, 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 I don't blame you. That, that's he. That he's a victim of daylight saving time. I'm telling you. He does this all the time. No, he yeah, doesn't. Yeah, but I didn't umpire tonight, so oh. I'm not oh, worn he, out he's, that. he's pretty good that way. And look, Jeff's been kind of drowsy this yeah, week. Yeah, I'm awake. Yeah, but, it, but it's daylight saving time, right? He's doing know, slammies. He's a little weird. Huh? What, what he's doing weird. slammies. Do, doing slammies? <laughs> mm -hmm. What are slammies? <laughs> oh, oh, those are slammies? Not oh, nodding out. Yeah. Nodding out is what heroin addict calls it. Well, I don't know. Marjorie puts on a movie at night or so on, and I, fall, I, don't, I nod right out. I don't know. I can't keep my mm. eyes open. And then when she turns the movie off, I'm awake. Yep. Yeah, so. Well, that happens on Jack's show. You know, you got Charlie and Wayne going to sleep, 
<laughs> but as soon as we go to the after show, they're wide awake for an hour and a half. Some people. What do you mean the after show? But you, don't, you don't know about that? No. You don't, you're an after show. Yeah, so what we do is when Jack logs off on Skype, Skype has a, for some reason, it allows the people that were on the show to continue to talk. And I found that out a year, year and a half ago and just started talking people into staying on. And we continue to talk and we have a great conversation and none of it's recorded. Really? And, it's not uh, like Zoom where it automatically just stops. Oh, no, right. it isn't like Zoom. Not, it's, yeah, it's always it's always been like that. We used to do that sometimes when you were on Alex. Uh, <laughs> when, with, with Skype? Yeah. Yeah. When we had Skype, yeah. Yeah, wow, when you sign off, we I, could sit there and I didn't know that. Keep yapping. Yeah. I wonder if I could call that Skype number after the show and be picked up you probably by you could. guys. Mm -hmm. um, probably can. Yeah. 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 Or you can get in on the last five minutes of Jack's so show. So what's more fun, Jack's show or the after show? <laughs> don't ask Alan that. He'll tell you. Yeah, don't ask Alan. Ask Charlie. He'll tell you. Wayne will tell you the after show. <laughs> we, we, we've talked two or three hours after this. Jack <laughs> and that's because you get a nap all through Jack's show. All through show. Jack's <laughs> show, yeah. Well, Josh and I and uh, and and uh, Kevin and Patrick get together on Saturday nights, you know, and have. But you our, do it through Zoom. We do it through Zoom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But oh, maybe I'll. Are you going to do it after the show tonight? If there is one. Always. Oh, yeah, okay. Always. Well, maybe I'll try and sign in and see if you guys are there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm asleep at that point. <laughs> oh, come on. Listen, I'm asleep now. You have okay? asleep now. Yeah. Whatever. At what time Have is it? Have another oh. glass of wine there, uh, Jeff, you know? <laughs> it's coffee. Oh, coffee week. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm using wheat coffee tonight. So you know. It's not it's not a it's it's wheat coffee. So mm. it's a it's a uh, it's a latte is what it is. And so they put the sugar in here and they put the cream in here and uh, the coffee is so weak. Mm. That it will never keep me awake. So, yeah, why not? You know? Mm. Mm. How much time we got? Oh, we got about 45 seconds left here. Anybody mm. doing anything interesting this weekend? <clears throat> okay. You're a bunch of exciting people. Oh. A what? <laughs> I'm going to uh, ultimately Massachusetts. Ultimately Massachusetts? Is that right? To see I my daughter. Oh. oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Where, where is ultimately? Is it near Boston? Yeah. Ultimately, is near Boston. Okay. Right. <laughs> I, I've never been there. <clears throat> anyway, uh, hey, listen. Let's uh, let's put on the theme here. There we go. There's our theme song. Hey, listen. Can figure out why we can't hear it. No, I've never figured it out. It has to do something with the. We've tried everything. Yeah. If I if I move it up to another level here on my playlist. Uh, it, it, you still won't be able to hear it, but stuff up there, you hear if I play it. So I've uh, never figured out why that is. And if I, if anybody has any idea, you know, we've even changed the, the kind of file it is and all of that. And it mm. doesn't, doesn't do it. Anyway. Go ahead and email Alex. And if it works, he'll send you a dollar. Yeah, we'll send you a dollar. Okay. I got a dollar for you. In fact, I'll make it ten bucks. Okay, I'm, I'll make it ten bucks. I'll make it worth it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Always nice having you here, Josh. A delight. Uh, and uh, 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 Alan, always wonderful. Charlie, glad we got you to get awake again. You were yeah. right next to Jeff here, and he, he was nodding off. So it looked like you were both the the show looked like it was really dying on the vine. <laughs> anyway, everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye. I'll give you a big wave goodbye as well. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and Jack Bishop, if he's here, we'll have another one following us uh, uh, using Skype at uh, GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday. We do the pop-up show. That'll be on Facebook. And then we'll be right back here again on Wednesday night at 10.30. For the same time. <laughs> what, what am I trying to say? Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as ever, as ever, if you see her, 
you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.